So those those are the pictures that you're seeing uh, from the Lee Funeral Home. The solemn procession has begun. Some time adjustments there from uh, 8.30. It's just some 13 minutes before 8.30. But you can see there... Uh, the procession is almost uh, taking off and members of uh, Kibaki's family there are seen uh, there maybe taking their place in the procession. Remember, this is quite going to be a solemn procession to State House, then proceeding all the way to Nyayo Stadium for the state funeral. Back here, we have been discussing about, you know, what you are seeing to understand what exactly is a state funeral service and um, I have learned from one of my guests that is uh, Dr. Fred Ogola that uh, despite being a, a military uh, kind of um, procedure and celebration or rather being Moi Kibaki's accorded military honors at this time that the uh, family is going to receive or rather going to have a play, pride of place. Maybe you can take us through um, that and what to expect in not too long when we come back uh, to the studio but for now these are the pictures from uh, the Lee funeral home there. We expect uh, that uh, uh, dignitaries have arrived or rather continue arriving at uh, the Nyayo Stadium for the state funeral service. The president himself, President Huru Kenyatta, uh, is expected at 10.30 this morning. This particular procession, this particular celebration is very much in line with what we have seen from uh, the British monarch given that they are, our, well, they are our colonizers. So this is a procession that is tailored uh, to what the British um, undertake where a person has been accorded as state funeral. You can see the red... Um, uniforms, the red and white uniforms there uh, with a full military regalia. And uh, talking about uniform and, you know, military regalia, Moi Kibaki uh, has been one of the presidents that we've had who's not been donning or rather has not been seen donning in the military regalia unlike his predecessor uh, that is uh, uh, Daniel Toretich Arab Moy the late as well as the founding father uh, Jomo Kenyatta there who in one more, more than one occasion had been seen donning that military regalia it was on display um, in parliament during the three days uh, that his body had been lying in state alongside other items that he deemed of value uh, including his golf a club there that is indicated that uh, you know he had been an ardent golfer and a patron of uh, the Musaiga Golf Club there a place that he enjoyed you know uh, you know his time there with friends as well as other uh, politicians there also on display was his favorite pen there and a book that detailed the proverbial first handshake uh, that Kenyan history uh, has. And this was during, uh, you know, the negotiations with the late Kofi Annan there after the post-election uh, violence there that brought semblance of peace in the country. That book was also under display. So if you did not take time, uh, rather did not get time to... Um, Go to Parliament buildings. Today is a public holiday that been set aside by the government to ensure that Kenyans as well as the international community, uh, you know, give this man a send-off, a befitting send-off. Uh, and as we heard from Kenyans who had already um, arrived at the Nyayo Stadium, it would not be a state function in the absence of the public. And... Uh, we are going to be keeping tabs on that. We expect that particular procession to begin any time from now, all the way uh, to State House, then proceed to Nyayo, uh, Nyayo Stadium. Just a quick reminder for those who want to make um, their way to um, Nyayo Stadium, a few um, roads have been closed off uh, to make this seamless. Uh, one of them is... Um, if uh, uh, you uh, motorists are advised to avoid Aerodrome Road and a section of Huru Highway between uh, Nyayo House and Lusaka roundabouts from around this time, as preparations are underway uh, to just uh, close off that particular uh, road there to allow entry of this procession that is about to leave the Lee Funeral Home to State House uh, through. Uh, 
uh, Awingskodek as well as Valley Road. Uh, then also motorists driving to the city from Wayakiwi and are intending to cross over to Mombasa Road are also advised to avoid Uhuru Highway. And, uh, and divert at the Nyayo House uh, roundabout to join Kenyatta Highway towards Moy Avenue, then head into Haley Selassie roundabout, then towards the city. So keep uh, keep uh, checking uh, on uh, your apps. I'm sure looking at the mobile penetration that we have and internet service provision, you can check. So you can see the, the procession has begun, Safin. Yeah, indeed, it has begun, and uh, this is actually going to um, uh, be very organized, as you can see on your screens there. The military is actually in charge of this particular process, so they're going to be using the Arguings uh, Kodek Road from Lee Funeral Home, um, and of course, just connecting to Valley Road, uh, which uh, will be part of the procession heading to uh, State House Road there um, after the body is going to be received at uh, State House. Then, a bit later on, after leaving State House, the body will be ferried via processional way all the way to Kenyatta Avenue and of course uh, to along Uhuru Highway um, all the way to uh, Nyayo Stadium that will be later on um, as part of the um, a state funeral uh, service that is slated to happen today that uh, is actually one of a kind. This is actually um, the third time that the country in can the country's history that uh, the Kenya Defense Forces is according full military and civilian honors to a national leader after Kibaki's predecessors that's um, the founding president Jomo Kenyatta in 1978 and Daniel Arap Moy in February 2020. And of course we saw um, a mock procession yesterday uh, by members of the military just you know trying to make sure that everything uh, is in place and members of the public had an opportunity to uh, see this particular dry run which uh, saw uh, the troops who were drawn from the three mil military formations march from State House Road into Kenyatta Avenue roundabout before heading towards Nyayo Stadium so a replica of what happened yesterday is expected to happen today as uh, we, uh, you know, the solemn procession takes uh, place uh, to Nyayo Stadium. We have our team at Nyayo Stadium and we'll be linking up with them just uh, so we can also get a picture of what is happening there. But in studio, we have a panel of three gentlemen who are helping us to just talk about this whole process and even the life of um, the country's third president, Mwai Kibaki. And I'm um, talking about Dr. Fred Ogola, a lecturer at Strathmore Business School, and John Murage, who part of Kibaki's um, strategy team. And now joining us is um, Ludeki Chwea, former uh, principal uh, secretary in the Ministry of Home Affairs, but currently is serving as the director general of the Kenya School of Government. And thank you so much for creating time for us. Thank you. All right. So just to bring you in, um, as you see what is happening today, maybe it would be prudent to begin by asking you, you served as a PS in the Grand Coalition Government. Um, what would have been like your most, um, something that stands out for you about Emilio Stanley Mwai Kibaki, the man that many are really, you know, talking so highly about? Personally, what is it that stood out for you about this gentleman? Yeah, thank you very much. <clears throat> For that question, <clears throat> what stood out very prominently uh, about President Kibaki was his commitment to duty. Put simply, he did not have time for jokers. That means that uh, once he assigned you duties to do, to perform, he expected nothing less than the best. And I recall that... Uh, Whenever I would go over to, to see him, to discuss with him, to get his approvals for certain decisions, you know, he expected you to, uh, you know, state very clearly what the challenge is and then what the solution is from your own perspective, meaning that you did not go to him for solution. Uh, and so and then you would explain the problem and then you would offer what you think is the right solution and you would uh, wait to see whether he agrees with you or he doesn't agree with you now if he agreed with you he would say very well very well proceed 
And if he didn't think your, this proposed solution is worthwhile, he, he, he gave you a face that showed that he's disappointed. And, and so you, 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 you had to very quickly uh, propose another solution that could work. So you had to have and, a plan B oh yeah, every time. You see, you needed to have rehearsed mm. uh, thoroughly. Well, that was my encounter when I went over to see him for the first time because I hadn't interacted with him very closely uh, to be able to understand some of these nuances and so on. But of course, subsequently, I, 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 I did well, actually, because I realized that uh, you needed to have done your homework thoroughly, and whenever you went over to see him, you needed to give him a brief and, and let him know what you propose to do and what impact that will have on society, on the country, on the economy. And, and, and then he would say, very well. Mm. And then he would be his friend. So subsequently then we became friends. That means I wasn't doing badly. Is it? <laughs> but, but for those who are doing badly and, 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 and sometimes I, I would be over there and I, I could see some living disappointed, then I would know this was, didn't do very well. So in short, <clears throat> he was a very, very intelligent person and <clears throat> he didn't have time for someone who did not do his work well. And he didn't hesitate to let you realize that he's not happy. But not in words. He, he didn't say it in words. But he gave you a look. Mm, the body the, language. The body language yeah. <laughs> probably was worse than if he had spoken, right? So everyone had to do well. So, so that is point number one. Point number two, he was very committed to making sure that the economy works. And he seemed to have understood that if the economy isn't working well, nothing else will work well, because all depends on the economy. And, 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 and therefore, in even most of the meetings we would have, the focus would be what decisions we are making, what plans we are making, and what impact will these plans have on the economy. Mm -hmm. So number one, for instance, every Kenyan will recall that he wanted the Kenyan uh, economy to be self-sustaining. And step one in achieving a self-sustaining economy is, of course, for people to pay taxes so that the country has the revenue it requires, it needs to be able to implement uh, uh, its programs. And, and you recall that uh, he stepped forward mm -hmm. personally mm -hmm. to push for everyone to have to pay taxes. All right. Uh, I'll come back to you just a bit, but what uh, we can see on our screens there is actually uh, the procession has already begun, and you can see there um, the movement uh, of uh, the, the military just spearheading this particular process. Um, this is actually an honor for uh, somebody who has served the country as uh, a, a head of a state, um, and everything had to be organized to make sure that uh, it falls into place. Um, the the, the very first time we were accorded such a privilege as a country to witness such an uh, event was when um, the country's founding father, Mzee Jomo Kenyatta, died in 1979. And of course, just uh, the other day, last in 2020, um, when uh, the country's second president, uh, Moi, Daniel Toroi, teacher Rap Moi, also was uh, being laid to rest. And of course, this is actually the third time that we are seeing this. And President Uhuru Kenyatta has uh, been uh, a sitting president who has had to, during his time as uh, the head of state, as uh, you know, had to uh, lead the country in uh, such a historic uh, event. So what you're seeing here is uh, the solemn procession. Uh, uh, taking its way through Agwings Kodek uh, Road. Uh, this uh, should uh, be the process that will lead the body to state house where President Uhuru Kenyatta is expected to receive it. Something that happens as a ritual for every um, head of state uh, who dies, whether he had served uh, previously. Um, this is a retired head of state. And of course, Regina, just, just to... Um, jog our minds a little bit some interesting facts that uh, you shared concerning um the uniqueness of uh, this 
kind of an activity that we are seeing right now on our screens. It is, you know, something that uh, there are certain uh, things that are considered, you know, for, for such a, an activity to happen. Just, just also just to remind us just a little bit. It's a moment that um, maybe uh, k k k some Kenyans may not have experienced or seen something like this. Uh, just, uh, just to tell us more about uh, the history and the uniqueness of uh, such state functions. Now, a majority of you find themselves uh, uh, group of their 30s and 20s definitely this is happening to them uh, is something that they have not seen uh, because the f the first one happened took place in 1978 and that was uh, indeed the first founding father of the country and that is Jomo Kenyatta there whose um, uh, body lay in state for a cool 30 days. So what we have observed uh, with uh, the fallen third president, that is Mwai Kibaki, his body lay in state for three days. And this is after his demise on on uh, on Friday there. So from Monday through, through Wednesday, Kenyans were allowed to actually go view the body and pay their last respects from parliament buildings. Safin, as you can see, the military outfit there is red and white. This is very synonymous with what the British also done for mm -hmm. these occasions. Remember, there were colonizers, and as such, uh, there are things, especially when it comes to matters, uh, you know, military and such, that we emulate from them. As you can see, it's quite a solemn procession there. That is uh, the Silver Springs roundabout, the intersection on uh, Arwings Kodek, and they're coming down through Valley Road to Processional Lane, all the way to State House, then proceed. Those are beautiful shots from our technical and camera crew there. As you can see, we're giving you all angles in this particular broadcast. That is KBC Channel 1 bringing you and televising this. And we're also streaming on our various platforms. So if you're not able to actually this watch, uh, watch this uh, from the comfort of your home, well, you can stream us live on our various platforms, including uh, Facebook and Twitter there, as well as our YouTube channel at KBC Channel 1. Our reporter, Yusuf Farah, is on ground just following up that particular motorcade. This is a procession in, um, in line with the state funeral that has been accorded full military honors. And some quick facts about uh, this kind of... Um, you know, procession. This is a preserve of uh, uh, commanders in chief, and this happens to be presidents, serving presidents, and also retired. It's also going to be having uh, a gun salute. We understand it's going to be a 19 gun salute uh, at the funeral. And also to note is that this is not accorded to a uh, commander in chief, former or serving, who commits suicide. That is a fact. That uh, why? Because uh, as far as the laws of the land are concerned, and this is Kenya, this is uh, t uh, taking one's life or committing suicide is considered taboo and against the law. But now you see the third president there. His first lap, his last lap of honor there, uh, slowly trickling through Valley Road. Indeed, he's been accorded all the military honors. A man who's been. Uh, Termed as a statesman, patient, you know, a loyal to family, and just quoting what um, his daughter there wrote on Twitter saying that uh, uh, Mwai Kibaki uh, used to spend time with his grandchildren when he could. Um, uh, Kibaki, Kibaki lo uh, leaves uh, behind uh, four children, including Jimmy, Wangui, Tony and Judy Kibaki. Now, Ogola, as you can see, that particular mutuke just going down through uh, Valley Road. Uh, maybe you can help us more understand understand this particular procession. It's well in line with what the British, uh, uh, how the British conduct themselves in such a time. But maybe you can give us more details, Dr. Fred. Yeah, you see, um, these these state funerals are very traditional. And remember that we have a heritage, and we have the British heritage. They left it with us. We have not run away much from it. And they are very standard. Like, you see, immediately the president could proclaim that we are going to have a state funeral. This thing went into the hands of the military. And, of course, now the military, you see, the organizations have been done. And uh, you also understand that, uh, unfortunately, but also fortunately, is that we had one in 2020, 
we did for the late president uh, Arab Moi. And of course, there's not just, it's, not, it's just around two years now that we're doing another one. So you realize that we are not dusting too much and we are just going to execute nearly what we did without having to go too much into history like the one which happened when we are comparing the 19, 1978 of the founding father. And as you can see, that uh, you will see that the family of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the late president has been given pride of place. You see that you will find them in the procession. You will see them as state house taking a strategic location. Whom are they going to be consoled? The, people, the person going to be consoled immediately when they arrive is going to be the, the first family. Uh, not the first family, but the, the, the family of the late president. Uh, Uru Kenyatta will convey his condolences there. Uh, of course, he has done before, but that now this is very official. Uh, when he arrives in, uh, in, in State House, of course, this is a place where Mwai Kibaki lived. So that's why actually he is going there and leaving his home now, heading to Nyayo Stadium before he goes to Odaya. It's a, it's a last journey. And I'm sure, like we said before, that we only take you where you went. Indeed. Uh, indeed. In the Catholic Church, as a Catholic, if you never went to church to pray, even if all your children plus your wife are Catholics and used to go to church every day, your body can never be taken there. So this is a requiem mass. It will be done by a Catholic, I think, uh, in the Catholic uh, way. Of course, it is uh, multi-religious, but of course led by... Yes. The, Catholic the Catholic Church is going to be taking point on this, but it's going to be interdenominational. interdenominational. And yes. yes, Catholics, in as far as the Catholic Church uh, faith is concerned, we cannot take you, rather the church cannot take you to a place you have not Never been. Went. So supposing he was not a church core, but we know the last and uh, the third president, that is Moai Kibaki, there was an avid, uh, you know, congregant. Yes, of, and so even the, the bishop say that he really respected the church. Yes. He sat in front, but he never spoke politics in church. Indeed. And uh, he, today, also, I think the Catholic Church will be in a pride of place. The family will be in a pride of place in this ceremony. Even in Odaya, they will be in a pride of place. Though interdenominational, but pride of place. Mm -hmm. But also remember that in Mwai Kibaki's functions, all of them, they used to be interdenomination. So it is something also in line with what he believed in. Um, also something that you might be able to see there, uh, which I think we also remember Mwai Kibaki for, is that uh, I don't know whether you remember the, the first president to call national prayer days. Uh, I, I think these are, so we can forget about these things, but it was a religious man who also had national prayer days. Uh, I think uh, Kibaki lived what he believed in. Um, of course, um, even if you disagree with him, he also had to say, I lived as I believed. And because he lived as he believed, we believe that this is what somebody leaves as a legacy. He taught the family. He taught them about a family value, like the daughter has just said. Uh, he had time for family. He had time for children. He had time for grandchildren. He had time for politics. I, I think that, uh, I think, for example, uh, what I can remember here is there's what you call presidential point. Can you imagine you are a president, you have a family. You have to deal with corruption issues. You have to deal with legal issues like law. You have to deal with the economy. So how can you be able to ring fence your emotions? When you're in the family, the emotions in state house should not come inside your family. Uh, when you go back to state house, you again, of course, see some of their family members also citizens. They may find they're saying the right side of the law or on the wrong side of the law. Again, you are, a, you are a head of state who does not bring family issues in the state house. Your friends, for example, like Joe, and you see, like uh, my, my brother Pierce has said, if you came with something that he didn't like, he appointed you, which means he's, he's your person. But if you came with something which was out of it, he look at you in the eye, shows you you go away. So remember, these are values we can learn. I know some people say, I can't multitask. But this is an example of how can you have all this running, like even now our, our, our current president. You have a president who has died. You have an economy to take care of. You have COVID-19 chasing you. There's an election here. All these things, you find yourself in a situation where you can laugh, but tomorrow you are crying over the economy. You are fixing the economy, full crisis is there. So how can you be able to segment your emotions to make all this work? Mm -hmm. I think the president is very well. And of course, last but not least, what I would say about in this segment is that what Mwai Kibaki taught me as a person, how can you be ambitious while not uh, missing the point? For example, you want to be president, if you, so, if you show too much over ambition, your ambition 
can actually kill Killing. your 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 goal or dream. So he was able to balance and be tactful by I want to be president, but I want to be very tactful. That's why he let Raila say Kibaki Tosha. He never said I should take the, the, the mantle. Now what we are seeing now is that somebody are saying I should be the president. Someone saying I should be the running mate. Why don't you wait for someone to torture you? It doesn't mean he was not interested, but he used strategy, like he said, so that it doesn't look like you really want it, but you want it, but somebody says now you should have it. <laughs> I think this is tactful. They tactful. should, wait, they should yes. wait for the torture moment. Yes. <laughs> they need to be, to, to be elevated to first. Yeah, yes. true. Yeah, so, so Kathleen, I see we are getting, yeah. that is Dennis Pritt, if I'm not too wrong. We are approach, uh, approaching State House there. Remember the first persons to be condoled there officially uh, are going to be uh, the family of the late president Mwai Kibaki by the current head of state and that is none other than president Uhuru Kenyatta and I like what our guests have said here that um, the late Mwai Kibaki had time for family had time to go to church and that's why we are also seeing uh, you know family and church standing with him at this particular moment. Sefin all right. Yeah, indeed. And, and, and just to get more about uh, that particular experience and that side of him, um, <coughs> as the former PS, uh, Mr. Chair, um, you were serving previously at the University of Nairobi, and many have really credited Mwaiki Baki, the former president, um, as somebody who was a great mentor. I know that has, must have been a very critical moment in your career, transitioning and getting into um, you know, public service. How did you benefit from this side of the former head of state? First of all, when we were growing up, we had great admiration for Mwai Kibaki. You know, those days of Form 2, those days of Form 3, and so on, particularly because of how he presented himself in Bunge during budget days. We would catch words like exchequer, and we would wonder now, what's exchequer? And so on. So <clears throat> we were very, very impressed as we were growing up. Uh, and, and when he was appointed... Uh, uh, vice president in 1978 again we were very happy because we feared that somebody else might be appointed and there were other people who were on the lineup uh, who were you know, also candidates I suppose but we were not very comfortable with as children somehow but when Kibaki was appointed we were very happy so fast forward I was very uh, surprised one time at one in one o'clock news uh, to to hear that my name uh, the president has appointed me president Kibaki appointed me first of all as a joint secretary in the Kofi Annan process if you recall 2008 mm. and so I was now a secretary to a cabinet committee that means from the lecture room as a lecturer to secretary of a cabinet committee uh, chaired by the vice president and members who are senior uh, cabinet ministers to mediate the crisis at that time. And we went through all of that. And then at the end of it, so that was the first time I met uh, 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 President Kibaki at personal level. And, and I was as impressed by the way he conducted uh, the official business as I was when I was in Form 2. Uh, and, 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 and I found him a calm person, very, very calm. Even when everyone else feels there's a big problem, he takes matters calmly. And, and this is what I've learned. Right? Like when everyone else is causing a stampede around you, he maintains calmness. And that's how we were able to overcome that challenge. Then I was appointed permanent secretary, as it was called at that time. And it was a tremendous experience. But the thing is, I was always afraid of failing, always afraid of disappointing the president, always afraid that I could make a mistake that would be seen to be a mistake that is below me to make. And, and, and for that reason, uh, I always had to work very, very hard. You will recall that was the period when, in the public service, we were very serious about strategic planning, preparing a strategic plan for your ministry so that it is very clear where you want to take the ministry and the strategies you're going to use to achieve that goal. 
then we were very strict about performance, contracting, and measurement, and even ranking. So you were afraid your ministry could be number last. Uh, I remember our ministry was number 28 at some time, at some point, and very quickly worked hard, it became number six. So that meant that you had to keep working, working hard. Then there, was, uh, there were issues of performance evaluation, performance appraisal, and so on. There were things like rapid results initiative. So, so the idea there was that we needed a public service mm -hmm. that worked. That worked, yeah. indeed. And uh, as you can see on your screen, um, this is actually uh, live for us this morning. This is at uh, State House, Nairobi. And uh, uh, we are seeing there the body of the country's uh, third uh, president, Emilio Stanley Mwai Kibaki. Um, a bit of a moment there. They have taken um, you know, just, just to stop a little bit. But any minute uh, from now, I believe the solemn procession will be uh, picking up once again. Mm -hmm. As uh, the head of state, uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta, is expected to receive uh, uh, the body of the country's third president, Emilio Stanley Mwai Kibaki, and of course, um, lay his uh, condolences to the family of uh, the great uh, man who many have eulogized as a, a patriot and a statesman who had the interest of this country at heart. And one of the things that have stood out about his rich uh, legacy was how he uh, managed to uh, build up. Kenya's economy and of course uh, we are expecting that a little, bit, a little bit later this is going to take um a shorter time because uh, the main event is actually supposed to be happening at a Nyayo uh, Stadium. So the head of state will be heading there, um, of course, also just to be part of this. Um, President Uhuru Kenyatta, you remember, he's the commander in chief of the Kenya Defense Forces, accompanied by the First Lady Margaret Kenyatta, they will also be making their way to Nyayo Stadium uh, to be part of the high profile list of delegation that will be there already seated and expecting them to arrive which include ambassadors high commissioners uh, members of the cabinet members of the national assembly the senate and even drawn from um, different counties so what you can see there is actually um, the military expressing their respect to a man that was once in this history of this particular country the commander-in-chief of the Kenya Defense Forces. And of course, uh, this is a ritual that is usually accorded to somebody who has served uh, in that capacity, whether it is uh, during the, the, the era or it was in the previous uh, time, a retired head of state or a current head of state. Regina. As we continue uh, with this particular live broadcast, information reaching our studios is that Tanzanian President Samir Suluhu Hassan has declared two days uh, of national mourning in honor of Kenya's former president, uh, Mwai Kibaki, there. Flags are to fly at half mast. At the same time, uh, Queen Elizabeth there has mourned uh, Mwai Kibaki coming him as a great statesman and taking pride in the legacy of his leadership. Those are live pictures from State House. The president is to receive the body of the late Mwai Kibaki who served as the third president of this beautiful nation that is Kenya, a man who has been termed as an astute leader focused on bringing Kenyans together, focused on matters of national unity, and he took up reins at a time when Kenya was struggling to remain afloat in as far as the economy was concerned. And in his first uh, term, uh, Kenya's economy grew to 700 billion shillings, and later on, by the time he was um, his tenure was coming to an end. Kenya's economy was capped at 1.3 trillion shillings. So much has been said by leaders, persons who knew him on a personal capacity as friends. And what is uh, you know common across board is that uh, he was a statesman, a gentleman, one patient, and always loyal to his people. However loyalty to him did not cloud his judgment such that if you made an error in judgment whether in speech or even action he was quick to reprimand whether in verbatim or even just with his gestures there as you can see that's the casket that is being lowered 
by the military. He's been accorded military honors, having served as the commander in chief of the country from 2002 all the way to 2013. In December 2002, when he uh, took up the reins. Kenyans were united just as they are, and some of the political analysts have been quoted saying that the death of Mwai Kibaki has been a uniting factor, not just to Kenyans, but also uh, to politicians in the run-up uh, to the August 9th elections there. We've not had campaigns uh, take place in the last uh, one week or so since the pronouncement of his death on Friday 11th April there and subsequently the last three days Monday through Wednesday when his body had been lying in state there we saw political uh, leaders also joining Kenyans to pay uh, their last respects there Wednesday we had a special sitting at Parliament uh, that gave an opportunity to legislators to also uh, pay tribute uh, to the late Mwai Kibaki those are pictures live from State House there. The military aligning the casket uh, so that uh, the president, that is President Kenyatta, can receive the body and officially condole with the uh, Moi Kibaki's family there. Uh, this is done in, uh, in memory of a leader who will serve once uh, as a commander in chief of the armed forces the, this is in line with also what the Brit, british do given that they are our colonizers there as now uh, let's uh, also bring in john murage you knew uh, the late mwai kibaki on a personal capacity when you see this happening right now i'm sure you you must there must be something that is you know pulling at your heartstrings at this point. Maybe we can share. Yeah. Before you actually uh, have this conversation, uh, let's listen in to what is happening at State House, then we'll come back to you. To State House now, let's have a listen. In. Even as we continue bringing you those uh, live pictures, and of course we'll just stay there for you, um, there was that uh, earlier question that I asked Murage, and I just want to give him that opportunity. I mean, this this might have, uh, you know, elicited some some sort of memory or something within you. Just very quickly, uh, tell us what is on your mind right now. It feels just uh, looking at uh, the person and knowing too well that he's gone and you've been with him when you were very young. And even just like the PS mentioned, from PS mentioned, when you were in Form 2, Form 3, Form 4, we wanted to imitate him. We wanted to read the newspapers. We wanted to listen to the budget. I was also taking economics at some point. And every time there was budget day, the way he was described by the national newspaper, news, by, by the standard, the label, the briefcase, the suits, and even the tie. You could see they were also passionate about the man. They loved the man. Then we had an opportunity now, after our college, we joined now the Young Democrats. And we were there as Young Dem Democrats reporting to him. And we didn't report to any other person. Then we formed the professional group and we, we were reporting to him. After the Democratic Party was formed, much later. There was then the Democratic Foundation. The Democratic Foundation was actually like uh, a training institute 
for the members of the Democratic Party. And we trained a lot of youths, a lot of young people. We, we, we actually mentored so many people. Today, they are in high offices out, out there. Such that by the time it was now coming to become the president, he used to call us and tell us now, young people, do you have a list of people you would like employed in, in, in the government? And we'd come with that list and he would just stick and tell us, just go to so and so, and they're all and they're all employed. Having such a person being buried today feels a lot of, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's quite a, a bad feeling. But we can only celebrate his life, appreciate his life, comfort the family too, and we are together in this. Mm. We, we think they're the head of state uh, Kenyatta. Um, they're uh, already just going to uh, officially, um, you know, begin this particular process at State House. Uh, there, he's going to uh, be heading uh, that uh, session where uh, members of the family of the country okay. that President uh, Emilio Stande Mwaiki Baki are going to uh, get a chance to officially uh, receive the condolence messages uh, from uh, the head of state and uh, the first lady, Margaret Kenyatta. You can already see there part of the family um, being escorted by the head of state uh, there to come walking through that uh, red carpet uh, to come to where the casket has been aligned and uh, any minute from now we should be crossing over there officially also just to get a glimpse of what is happening this is um, yeah let's listen into the national anthem as which kickstarts this officially
Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty, ever-living God, you are gracious and merciful to your creation. Remember your servant, the third president of the Republic of Kenya, His Excellency Mike Paki, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. We pray with confidence that in the last day you raise up his mortal body to perfection and join the common of saints. Give him a merciful judgment and the forgiveness of sins. May Christ the good shepherd lead him safely home to be at peace with God our Father and be happy forever with the whole saints. Saints of God come and intercede for him. Angels of the Lord come to meet him. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ who called you take you to himself and grant you eternal life. Into your hands, Lord, we commend his spirit. We come and commend our brother, the third president of the Republic of Kenya, His Excellency Mike Paki. Eternal rest and grant unto him, O Lord, and the light of a virtual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that is uh, the uh, conclusion of the special prayers that have been accorded there uh, by the Catholic <coughs> priest. Um, as uh, the head of state uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta was receiving the body of uh, former President uh, Mwai Kibaki at State House Nairobi, a brief session there as you see the military um, walking out um, marching their way out of uh, State House uh, this uh, should actually um, set the pace now for the procession to be headed to Nyayo Stadium. Of course uh, any minute uh, from now uh, we will uh, you know, be seeing um, movement uh, as the has uh, makes its way uh, to Nyayo Stadium there. But of course, uh, this is uh, from...
All right, so still as teachers there, we are seeing uh, troops uh, drawn from the three military um, uh, formations uh, marching uh, their way there just moments after that special prayer that has been accorded to the country's third uh, head of state, uh, Emilio Stanley Mwaiki Baki, uh, whose body has now been transferred uh, to a different uh, kind of... Uh, um, this is actually something that, uh, you know, is a high-profile kind of a treatment that is given to a head of state. Of course, uh, Regina, you can see, um, you know, this didn't quite take long. Of course, uh, just uh, sort of like signaling that um, there should be um, uh, quite of activi uh, an act activity speaking up at Nyaya Stadium at this particular moment. Regina. Uh, now we, as the cottage leaves the state house, Sefin, we expect maybe in the next 20, 30 minutes or so, given that we're expecting the head of state there to also be at Nyaya Stadium from around 10.30, according to uh, the, the, the statement that was made public yesterday about, you know, the procedure of the ceremony of the state uh, funeral that is to be held at the Nyaya Stadium. We're expecting the head of state, he's just seeing off the cottage as it leaves uh, state house there. It's going to be, uh, a, it's quite a solemn